merchant who had a daughter of surpassing beauty, gorgeous in limb and face. And there were not one, not two, but three Brahmin, noble, who were all seeking her favor. And this merchant was baffled because each of these men was equally handsome, equally rich, equally well-spoken, equally in love with this beautiful woman, and no one quality was any one of them surpassing the other. Each of them would make a fantastic match for his daughter. And while he was pondering what he was going to do, who he was going to marry his daughter to, tragedy struck. The merchant's daughter went down to the river to gather water, and she encountered a serpent with such surpassing <coughs> venom with both its heart and its fangs that when it saw this beautiful woman it immediately rose up and spit her and struck her dead. Well, the tragedy was such that each of these three Brahmin took it very hard. When the daughter was placed upon the funeral prior, the first of them flung himself onto her body and burned to death with her, seeking to be with her. The second set up a small hut near the place where she had been taken from us, and there he lived as a hermit. While the third took up a mendicant's bowl and staff and wandered the world as a beggar, seeming to remember her. And as he traveled, he found himself on a mountainside where he encountered an ogre fan. Ogres being both very mysterious and wicked and knowing many potent secrets. He was sitting by the fire, and the ogre child was stirring the soup. The ogre wife came in and said, Why, you burned the soup again, you stupid child! He reached down and picked up a knife and sliced his head off. And the Brahmin was a bit taken by back by this behavior. He said, My goodness, woman, what have you done? You just killed your son over the burnt soup? And the ogre's wife said, Oh, it's no problem. My wife, my husband makes this a salve that can heal any it could even bring back someone from the dead. I'll just smear someone on top of his head and put it right back there, and he's good as new. Now, don't do that again and clean up all the blood that's all over the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the Brahmin looked at this and said, Oh! For he was no fool. And sure enough, when all the ogres had gone to bed, he snuck us to the mantle, scooped up some of the sap, and carefully snuck up and ran as fast as he could back to the spot where his beloved had been taken. He smeared on the ground where the ashes had been scattered, and lo and behold, it worked. It worked really, really well. It worked so well, in fact, that not only did it bring the merchant's daughter back to life, it brought the Brahmin who had burned himself up with her back to life as well. So there we there were, all over again. The merchant, the merchant's daughter, and all three Brahmins. So I must ask of you, my various my patron, which of these three men is qualified to be your husband? <laughs> the man who killed himself for Oh. Who brought her back. Well, ah. <laughs> which one would you say? I wonder who the guy killed himself for. I wish for some. <laughs> I say the one, the one, who, uh -huh, <laughs> the one, the one who killed himself. With her? Yeah, I wish it were so. But you see, when the man came back and smeared that ointment into the ground, he brought that daughter into life. He is her father, and likewise, the one who burnt himself up. He was brought into life by the same action that brought the value of daughter to him. He is her brother. I mean, she, he is his, her sister, and she is his brother. So the only one who is left who can possibly marry him is the hermit who stayed there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my tale. <laughs>